Diablo 2 was a huge part of my childhood. I got the game when I was in around 7th grade or so, and when I got it, that was what my entire life became about for a good long while. I played it right from the moment that I got home from school, all the way until I had to go to bed, and I usually didn't even bother doing my homework. And then that next summer, between 7th and 8th grade, for me, that was spent playing Diablo 2 over Battle.net and pretty much nothing else. And to this day, Diablo 2 is still the only online multiplayer game that I've ever really been able to get into. So now that there's an HD remaster for the game coming out, it has me really excited, and I thought it would be kind of fun to actually go back and play through the first game in the series. When I got Diablo 2 as a kid, my copy came with the battle chest that included both the first and the second games. So I actually did play the original game when I was a kid as well, I just never really finished it. Then when I went to go and do this review, I thought that I still knew where that game disc was for the PC, but that's actually not the case. It looks like I lost that over the years, which is weird because I still know where all my shit for Diablo 2 is. But that's okay. I've always liked console more anyway, and EA actually ported Diablo 1 to the PS1 back in like 1998 or so because they didn't always suck. But with the way that retro game prices are right now, let's take a look and see what that game's going for these days. F*** it! I'm using emulation. The world of Sanctuary is caught in the middle of an eternal conflict called the Sin War. The forces of heaven and hell are constantly fighting for dominance over the other. Eventually, the mortal realm comes into play, and both sides try to convert as many mortal men to their side as they can. A great rebellion in hell sees the three prime evils, Mephisto the Lord of Hate, Baal the Lord of Destruction, and Diablo the Lord of Terror, banished to the mortal realm. Baal and Mephisto are quickly captured by Herodric mages and sealed inside soul stones, which are buried deep beneath the sands of the east. Diablo takes a little bit longer to capture, but he's eventually sealed in a soul stone as well, which is placed beneath the Great Monastery. The town of Terrestrum is built around that monastery, and the evil beneath is eventually forgotten about. Much later, Diablo begins to regain some of his power, so he corrupts the local king and possesses his son, Prince Albrecht. And this is where the player character comes in. It would have been very easy for them to make the story just bad guys in the dungeon, go get them. But they didn't. They chose to give the game a very deep lore which really opened up the door for future sequels that might not have been planned at the time. I mean, when you go and dive and look at the deep lore of this first game from 1996, you'll see that Belial and Asmodan led the rebellion against the three prime evils. And those are both demons that were fought as major bosses in Diablo 3, which didn't even come out until 2012, about 16 years later. It's amazing how much detail they put into the backstory, especially when you consider the fact that even if they didn't, the game probably would have still sold just as well. I mean, most people playing the game back in the day had no idea there was this much backstory. I know I definitely didn't. Plus, the gameplay is still pretty solid, even though it really didn't age all that well. First of all, the game is sluggish as hell by modern standards, and it was slow back then too, and they knew it, because in the PS1 version, you can actually increase the speed of the game, which I did pretty much any time that I was in town. And like I already mentioned, I did use emulation to play through this game, and at first I didn't want to use save states to sort of preserve the original experience, but then I realized just how lethargic that original experience is. Plus, the game already lets you save any time in any place, and I've already seen save states as a quicker way of doing that, so f*** it. This game has what I like to refer to as first game syndrome, which is where all of the things that a series is well known for are there, but in a very rudimentary form. Instead of having a bunch of dungeons for you to dive into, there's only one, with 16 levels, and as you dive deeper into it, it changes from your typical monastery dungeons, to the deep caves where the earth is cracked and filled with lava, and eventually to the lowest levels that look like the very pits of hell itself. The basic gameplay loop of this series has existed right from the beginning. Kill monsters to get equipment, so that you can kill bigger monsters, to get better equipment, so that you can kill even bigger monsters. It's not a complicated loop, but it does feel satisfying. The game can be pretty difficult at times, 
So finding that new piece of gear that suddenly boosts your attack or defense enough that you can finally get past that big mob of monsters is genuinely exciting. But your inventory space is very, very limited, which means constant trips back and forth to town get really annoying really fast. I think there are some parts of the game that have aged really well, like the deep character customization, and other parts haven't aged so well, like the slow and sluggish combat. But even though this series has never really been especially known for the graphics, I think the visuals of this very first game still look pretty good today. I've never really been much into the whole gothic horror fantasy look, but with the type of world that was made for this game and the lore that it has, it works for me here. And I also really like the soundtrack. It's very low-key and atmospheric. You'll occasionally hear tortured screams mixed in with the music, reflecting the dark fate of the king and his son. But the game doesn't really use a whole lot of music, so most of the time the only sounds that you're treated to are the sounds of you fighting demons. And fighting demons is how you spend about 90% of your time with the game. Like I already said, the game can be very difficult, and it isn't even always fair about it. Most of the difficulty comes from being totally overwhelmed by these massive mobs of monsters. When I started playing, I started as the warrior class because that's actually the canon version of the story. But then when I got down to about level 6 or so, I ran into these guys that spit acid at you and they are a huge pain in the ass to kill without a ranged weapon. I probably could have just found a bow to swap out with my sword and shield and would have been okay, but I decided to start over as the rogue class to see how they're different. I had originally intended on keeping both save files and switching between the two, but I f***ed that up right away and overwrote my warrior save file, so I just played as a rogue for the rest of the game. The rogue does seem to play very differently from the warrior. First of all, there are a lot of traps with chests that will activate when you open them. Not only can the rogue detect which chests have traps, but they can also deactivate them and open them safely. Plus, using a bow lets you shoot through barred walls, which can be very helpful with the big mobs. And I also found that most of the time if I stand right in front of a doorway, the monsters will sort of funnel into the doorway and I can take them out one at a time. In general, I found that as long as I didn't let myself get cornered or surrounded, I could cheese my way through pretty much any mob just by mashing attacks and constantly downing health potions. And looking at the combat today, it may not seem like it's really much to look at. It almost looks like two action figures bashing into each other until one falls over dead. But back in the day... Okay, so this was never really much to look at, but my god was this addicting back in the day. And it's still pretty addicting to go back and play it today. And that addicting gameplay loop alone was enough motivation for me to keep playing until I could finally kill the Lord of Terror. And Diablo himself really isn't all that hard. But when you get to him, he's surrounded by so many smaller minions that it's a pain in the ass to separate him and isolate him from the group so that you can actually take him down. By the way, I sort of feel like I haven't really done a very good job of really showing you just how unfair this game can be at times. So here's a montage of me dying a lot.
Even though the backstory is very deep and eventful, there isn't a whole lot that actually happens during the main story of this game. For the most part, you just show up, kill Diablo, bury his soul stone in your forehead to contain him, and then leave. There are some other quests to do, but none of them have any real importance to the overall story. This game was a lot of fun for me to go back to, and now that I've finally beaten the game, I'm not sure why it took me this long to get around to it. I mean, a single playthrough only takes about a dozen hours or so. Maybe it's because when I was a kid I played the second game first, and so then any time that I did play the first game, it made me want to go and boot up the second one because it does everything so much better. But getting to beat the game as an adult feels like I got to settle a childhood grudge, and I'm glad that I did. Thank you so much for watching my review of Diablo on PS1. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and let me know about it in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here, I upload every Saturday. Follow me on Twitter, and I hope to see you next time.